Hello, fellow scholars and purveyors of morbid curiosities alike. I'm Dr. Caleb, joined by the froggiest fellow, Dr. Zach, and this is SC Pod. Zach, how are you today? Uh, well, I'm here. Oh, that's right. You were, uh, you were on Ketter Duty this week. I was on Ketter oh, Duty. I am getting a page. Getting a page. Oh. Uh, so, before we start, uh, I guess I have to administer a clearance check for this episode. So, if you aren't clearance level three or higher... How do they find us? Well, it's the frogs. Don't do that to me. So if you aren't clearance level 3 or higher, please stop listening before the check happens. As I don't know what happens if you fail the check. Or really how to even administer it. So I'm just going to leave this audio here as a note to the editor to make sure they put it in. Who's our editor? Administering clearance level check. Clearance level 3 required. Stand by. I don't know, but uh, apparently he's going to put it in. <laughs> or they. They could be a they. Uh, that, that's very true. This could be a robot, after all. I don't know. Maybe a robot lady. Um, well, uh, I guess now that hopefully our audience is all clearance level 3 and above, and we cannot be held liable. Clearance level check complete. Or if somebody hacks into it. Or if the check just fails. Yeah. Um, Zach, what are we what are we talking about today? Uh, so in the grand old tradition, let me go off and start recite the uh, special campaign procedures. Frozen samples of today's entry, SCP-306, are stored at Bio Research Site 101. Research on SCP-306 is to be carried out under Biosafety Level 4 protocols. If you don't know what that means, that means neither do we. Subjects infected with SCP-306 are to be immediately placed under quarantine. Any items making physical contact with infected subjects or SCP-306 residue are to be incinerated. Personnel interacting with infected subjects are to remain in full hazmat containment suits, and personnel interacting with infected subjects or SCP-306 residue are to remain under mandatory quarantine and submit a twice-daily examination for a period of two weeks after interaction. Containment breaches within controlled environments will result in lockdown of the affected area. Personnel are within within the affected area are to remain in place until cleared for release. Hazmat teams are to remove and examine personnel for signs of infection, and infected personnel are to be quarantined. At the affected area is also to be sterilized. A one kilometer radius around any areas experiencing an outbreak of SCP-306 is to be quarantined. Areas are to have all water and sewer systems sealed. Hazmat teams are to be deployed in the area, and all persons in the quarantine zone are to be evacuated and screened for infection. Uninfected persons are to be released with non-Foundation employees administered Class B amnestics. Infected persons are to be terminated. Following completed evacuation, enclosed areas are to be sterilized with ethylene oxide. In unenclosed areas, controlled burning followed by a ground sweep are to be enacted. Wetlands harboring SCP-306 are to be impounded, filled, and sealed with concrete. Preventing SCP-306 from infecting any large body of water is an Alpha class priority. A lot of fucking work. Well, wow, that's a that's that that's a mouthful. Um, I guess that's that's Ketter duty. Um, you know, I just have to deal with uh, pepperoni bombs and. Uh, the age-old question of pepperoni on, or uh, a pineapple on pizza, but I've dealt with cakes and frogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so you know, I, I after after Ketter duty, we do get the, the week off. Um, you know, they they do try to take a little bit of our mental health into account. Um, and uh, I was still worried for you, Doctor Zach, and so I uh, did a little bit of research on this one on my own, um, just because. Uh, it's not that I'm scared of the Ketter duty itself. I'm more scared of you and the trouble you can get up to. So hey now, um, hey now, hey, I'm a 
felt that bad. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so SCP-306, uh, obviously a Keter, and uh, therefore the, the most exciting of the bunch. Um, this is a, 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 a really weird one. This is a, a dense one. Um, just, like... I mean, I have the article here in my hands here, and uh, this is like two pages, three pages long of just description, special containment procedures. So you know there, we're, we're fighting with some sort of uh, slimy abomination here. Slimy. Um, so SCP-306 is a fungus that infects uh, via inhalation of the spores or skin contact. Um, at the beginning, uh, after infection... The symptoms are simply sneezing, coughing, and skin lesions. And these lesions take the form similar to warts. And when they peel off, they reveal another lesion underneath. And the peeled layer that falls off can actually carry the infection. Uh, if in untreated, these lesions cover the body in approximately two weeks. And it seems to infect all biological matter, just affects humans differently than literally anything else yeah and am i am i yeah, kind of on the right track yeah here? i just want to fill in a couple of uh details there and that the specific kind of fungus that scp-306 is is related to what we call a trichophyton and if you don't know what that means no that is the kind of fungal infection that leads to stuff like athlete's foot jock itch um ringworm which i didn't realize was a fungus uh, turns out that they're all a parasitic kind of fungus. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, specifically, I wanted to point out that the incubation period to f pass for the initial period is about two weeks of that coughing and those warts. And then after that, uh, becomes a three week period where the, the subject will then lose uh, rapid weight. Um, and then their skin starts undergoing a specific kind of change. Uh, more permeable water so uh, interacts differently with water um, what we learn one of the things we, we've learned while talking to people undergoing this metamorphosis is that the process is exceedingly painful uh, and then after that for the uh, becomes the second part of the process which uh, I have here noted as the frogging uh, in which the uh, subject become undergoes the process which kind of makes this whole process horrifying in that for the next two to five uh months the subject will experience shrinkage of all their internal organs and systems uh a reshaping a complete restraped shaping of their skeletal structure uh until they represent and look like a frog like ribbit ribbit the thing that kermit was supposed to be uh and they don't really represent or look like any normal kind of other amphibian species. They look like the platonic idea of what a frog looks like if you were asked like a 10 year old. And so there's not any real comparisons we can make in nature to see like what kind of frog this would be specifically. More disturbingly is that when you dissect one of these frogs, it's that it's they're not frog organs. They are the same organs just shrunk down of the original human that was in there. Um, and one of the other random things I wanted to point out is because I, one of the things that happened to me while doing this project was I fell in a rabbit hole because I saw a note saying that uh, they can reproduce in this state uh, and the way they reproduce is similar to the uh, Agokinus caligaris, um, which is the scientific name for the red-eyed tree frog. And so I ended up Googling uh, red-eyed tree frog mating habits. And let me just say that... Uh, oh, that's the reason. That, that yeah. It, it was because you were... Yeah, that that's the reason. Yeah, no, so like there's... That you looked there's that a, up. Uh, were you at least in incognito mode? Oh, God, no. Uh, if I'm looking this up, everyone's going to know it. Uh to quote a popular YouTuber, the Frank, messy, messy, froggy style. Oh. Yeah, there is foam action involved. Um, but yeah, what are the, and inter the most disturbingly, as we will kind of be highlighted in, in a audio log that we've uh, 
tactically acquired is that there's not a we, we initially thought there was a diminishing of the intelligence of the human when they undergo the uh the frogging but that's not true and so these little f these former humans maybe current humans uh are fully aware of what's what's happened to them like they can write notes and shit they can communicate and boy do they want to be your friend because they are friendly I remember being covered in the hazmat suit, just covered in frogs. So, uh, just filling in a, a few gaps that I, I have noted here. Um, like like we said, the fungus seems to affect um, humans differently than it, everybody else. And when they infect a human, uh, the fungus secretes an unknown enzyme mm -hmm. that seems to break down a person's cells yep. and alters their structural structure, mm -hmm. um, create, creating uh, extra organelles. And, uh, you know, it's been a really long time since I've been in middle school, but um, I did the research so I feel dumb so that our listeners don't have to. Organelles, uh, if it's also been a while since you were in middle school science, are little organs in a cell that let it function. Think like the mitochondria, you know, the powerhouse of the cell. Um, and so fundamentally, like, even though they're skeleton and the the organs inside these frogs are still vaguely human on a cellular level they're completely different yeah it's kind of a weird um, bag and uh yeah yeah and um i i seem to have an old version of the article here mm. um uh, when you were going over the timeline of the of the infected um you had mentioned shrinking of the organs, reshaping of the skeleton, and whatnot. Mm. But I also have here decrease of intellect. Yeah, that's... A, like, Is that not a thing that you've observed? Like I just mentioned, uh, that was one of the things that we thought was initially true. Um, but later tests, because there's a period... The timeline for 306 is kind of fuzzy, because there's not an exact date of discovery. Um, the earliest date we have is in the 1980s. Um, and so during that decade, we did a whole battery of testing, and it came out during that that they are not, there was no decrease in intelligence. They are just as smart as they were when they were Foundation staff. Um, Interesting. And including all the problems that brings. And so, which is one of the contributing reasons why they were uh, upgraded from Euclid to Keter in the 90s after that battery of tests. Because, um, yeah, they are fully sentient. They are fully intelligent and they are very contagious. And I can't. And I yeah, can't help. Yeah. Yeah. And and I do want to. Sorry. I'll say that, that uh, one. Of, I can't help but be reminded because this is a fungal-based life form and effect that's causing this transformation. Is that if it's not some level similar to what we see in uh, the cordyceps fungus that we see in bugs, ants. Um, that causes it to re go up to the highest point so that when it releases spores that it, it's sort of picked up for maximum wind carriage or how some other versions of it will go back to the nest to try and infect more that way. So I can't help but wonder if the trichophyton in this case is making these frogs overly friendly so that they try and spread more that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it is... Uh uniquely uh horrifying in the fact that um these frogs as much as they can't speak to us um they still identify as human and so yeah they still kind of uh approach us and you know you who i called brother you know mm -hmm. um and then uh they they, they want to hang out with you and um when the infection is is done via physical contact with these frogs um that is almost using the psychological need of humans to want to be close together yeah in order to reproduce yeah and again they can reproduce by themselves too which is whatever um but i don't know if that's foamy <laughs> foamy is the word foamy. you're looking for there um I can't. I don't know how much of that is them still being human and wanting that connection, or if there's anything related to the fungus taking advantage of that, or in some way 
producing that behavior for them. That would be those are yeah, the questions I, mean, I that, have. That could very well be. Um, I do have a couple other things. That could very well be it. Uh, I do have a couple other things to go over just because there's a bit more of the article. Um, that specifically mm -hmm. at some point in either the early '80s or maybe just before uh, SCP-306 was discovered in Louisiana in the swampy area, where the locals had reported some unknown amphibious creatures, um, as well as some local disappearances that happened. Uh, which we know now may be that those frogs were the locals. Um, we at some after after the uh, capturing of these uh, specimens, we there was a whole battery of tests that happened throughout the eighties. Uh, the first of which was that was the observance that of the uh, SCP three hundred six's interaction that was unique to humans and that were so far the only one that gets turned into frogs. Um, and that a, an unnamed doctor uh, during that period asked for increased funding, uh, to which I say, good luck, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then at some point, there was another doctor that was the director of the facility, noting that, or noting and speculating that there could be an unknown number of SCP-306 specimens out there in the wild. Uh, we just don't know because frogs and swamps aren't exactly unknown like you're, of course you're going to see a frog in a swamp it's a question of like is that the frog you're looking for um right. and then later on during the decade there was a there was a noted uh increase of resistance of these specimens to antifungals um until the uh incident i-306-3 um in which a series of uh 306-1 specimens were uh really which uh, escape containment. Uh, a researcher named Thompson was shot and killed. Uh, there is an audio log, which is again the one we uh, borrowed. Uh, and then lastly, in the at some point during the 1990s, uh, 306 was observed to develop a widespread spectrum resistance to antifungals, uh, and then finally upgraded to its current status of Keter. Yeah, and, and uh, I I do want to also emphasize before we get into uh this audio log, which I, I, I was told didn't exist. So yeah, well, I don't you know, know what I, strings you pulled I, to get it. You know, I just want to say it was a, definitely a group effort. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, but before we get to that, uh, these are not small frogs. Dude. Um, I have not seen them in person. Uh, I, I actually absolutely refuse to, uh, to be near a frog. Um, just, because I had a bad experience with food poisoning with frog legs in <laughs> Paris one time. Um, and I, I, I don't fuck with them anymore. Yeah. But uh, these are 25 to 30 kilog kilogram frogs. Yep. And they are about half a meter in length. Um, for those of us that are using freedom units, these are like two foot long frogs. Yeah. Um, and how much these are weigh? not These are not small frogs. <laughs> and how much does 30 kilograms weigh? Uh, do I look like a goddamn computer? Uh, looks like it's 55 pounds. Oh my that is, goodness. That is a terrier-sized frog. Yeah, that is a dog-sized frog. So yeah, imagine, like, 11 so, of those barreling down on you. Yeah, what the and heck? And what a hug. Like, you know, the, the, the picture that comes along with this article, it'll be posted on, uh, uh, as the show, the show, uh, picture, but... It, it kind of looks like a small frog. When you think of frogs, like, you can have, like, a bullfrog or something. Those are kind of big, but this is, like, four or five times the size of those bullfrogs. Yeah, the branch it's on is the size of my leg. Like, these are these are big frogs. Anyway, I, I just wanted to emphasize, like, it is abnormal how, lo how large these frogs are. So, yeah, no, that's a good point to emphasize, because... Uh, but, uh, I guess... Uh, yeah, I, I guess we can we can get to this magical audio log that seemed to have uh, manifested, I yep. guess. Roll it! Thank you for being here on short notice. Sure! All right. First order of business. Please state what you were doing when the breach occurred. Well, I was conducting feeding of the 306-1 specimens. What's his name, um... Thompson was getting the feed and I was going to administer it. 
I did a count of the specimens. There were 11, but that was wrong because there should have been 12. So I told Thompson to take a look at the logs and see if one had been moved from another site. All of a sudden, there's a flash of motion, and next thing I know, I'm being pinned down by some of the specimens. I don't remember what happened after that. When I woke up, they were gone and security was already there. Thompson was laying there on the ground bleeding from his mouth, and the guards escorted me out. So you were attacked by the specimens? Basically. I understand that these creatures are normally quite docile. What caused this aggressive behavior? Okay, so we've been performing some new tests on the specimens. What kind of tests? Uh, intelligence testing. Printing through mazes, training them, that sort of thing. And what does this have to do with the breach? Everything. These guys were speeding through the puzzles, memorizing commands almost instantly. We looked at the data, and these guys were smart as primates. Smarter than even that. We've tried teaching them how to read, how to write, and they picked it up in the blink of an eye. I have documentation that says those creatures are no more intelligent than a common tree frog. See, that's what we thought at first. But this testing, it showed that we were dead wrong. They were writing coherent notes to us. They told us what their names were. We gave one of them an IQ test and it scored 127. These things are human, trapped in the bodies of frogs. So what led to their aggressive behavior then? I'm not sure. Thompson brought in his kid's book with some fairy tales in it. it seemed like they enjoyed it, but after that they started getting angry with us. They were, uh, depressed, I think. They wrote notes telling us that they, we had no right to keep them here, that they needed to be out in the world, that they needed to be free. What exactly did they expect to be able to accomplish if they were able to escape? I don't know. Okay, I believe we are done here. Wait, before you go, can you tell me what happened to Thompson? I'm sorry. He was killed in the breach. Stray bullet in the chest. <sighs> That's a shame. Who's going to bring them another story? Okay, okay. Uh, I, I have not heard this one yet, but uh, I think the first thing that we need to talk about is... Uh... Was that my voice? You know, Caleb, happy birthday. Uh, I know that I just want to get that out of the way. I know that's something that I've been bad about in the past, and so I just want to say I wish you the happiest of birthdays. Uh, moving on, I want to emphasize that most of the testing done for it 306 was over the course of a decade, and so I can't help but wonder what other sort of mutations that it'll undergo in the future, and if that's something that we need to have better documentation of. Because it's been a hot minute since the 1990s, and I wonder if there's been additional changes, or if there was just nothing noted. Yeah, I mean, you, you, were, you were on Ketter Duty last week, um, but it, it seems to be that there's some sort of... Uh... There, there's still a lot of ongoing research with this. Yes, the it was upgraded to Keter's, Keter in the 90s, um, but uh, we're learning more about uh, about when, like the intelligence of these creatures, and um, this is also a really difficult SCP to um, really research because uh, you're dealing with things that are intelligent, and also if you even look at them funny you're also going to turn into one so yeah. um and i mean like you know there is a there is a note at the bottom of the picture on the article um dr stan yep was turned into one of the frogs yep r.i.p so uh yeah there's um there's it's hard to really get any out anything out of these frogs i, I think we're in a, a a moment of like trying to just contain them and make sure that we're not um, getting into a gray goose scenario, but with frogs. Yeah, I was kind of wondering that when I was um, because these are highly contagious. Yeah, I was wondering about that, and I kind of wonder why there hasn't been like any sort of simulations done for like a you know lack of a better lack of a better word F K class scenario for these guys, because. Um, like with the cakes, I feel like there's potential with the frogs to cause an end of the world scenario. Because um, if you just get like a large population of these frogs out there in the wild, 
Um, like it was, uh, the, the site director had speculated, uh, we might already be in trouble and just not know it. Yeah, well, and, and, and like, what if a, a researcher has a tear in his hazmat suit, a little bit gets on him, and he's starting to become infected, and you can infect other people during the incubation period. Yep. So, like, he goes home and, you know, pretend that he's part of the 1% of researchers that are here that have a, a personal life outside of work, and then he's, he's you know, grinding up at the club or something like that, mm. and suddenly the entire the entire club is turning into frogs and well, that's all just from one person that has a little bit of a containment breach more than that like what if he goes on vacation to say like new york or los angeles exactly uh, so goes to London, it, it's something like that when you have these highly when you have these highly communicable like scps or just high replication of these like they're very scary to deal with because one slip up and you could end the end humanity faster than the cakes could something definitely a problem um and after so many years after that initial request for fund additional funding i can safely say that it did not happen so clearly the frogs are not a priority what do you think they do with all the money um i think they honestly my pet theory is that they um try to develop new weapons to try and kill a 682 i mean yeah it's a, that is it's kind either of, I mean, that or it's about that stoop it's all for the space operations division mm, yep yep like frogs no that space marines and stuff that stupid battleship above jupiter sure yeah that's that's very true <laughs> i mean who knows what's actually happening i mean like I, there is a certain amount of like yeah there are so many dangerous things that we could use a little bit of R&D for. Um, but when you have a, a super destroyer that is sending us transmissions <laughs> that they want to destroy us, um, I think I think money is maybe not going to all the right places. Yeah, it's, it's um, not to but, mention like, anything going on at Site 19, Site 19 or any of the um, extra-dimensional ops uh, departments. Or the 4th of July wow that we had the other, uh, what was that, like, last yeah, year? Yeah, that was, that was fine. Um, speaking of it, like, I feel like they also play favorites with certain researchers. Like, every time Dr. Bright signs off something, gets you, it just gets approved. Huh. So, I mean. That's a good point. Like, throw money our way. We're, That's we're a good doing point. good work. I have a PhD to justify. At least upgrade my quarters, man. Right. We're going to have to get together and bitch about that sometime. Yeah. Um, yeah. Zach, do you play video, very many video games? Uh, whenever, when I have time, yeah. So, um, do you know about The Last of Us? Yeah, yeah I, I, I think I know where you're going with this. Okay, what apocalypse would you would you? So, for for those of you who don't know, there, uh, The Last of Us is a is a zombie kind of game um, that is done with a fungal spore as well that uh turns things into walking zombies um and so it's it's very easy to draw the comparison between uh fungal spores that turn people into zombies and fungal spores that turn people into frogs so zach i ask you as the quintessential um mushroom fun guy uh, -huh. uh which which apocalypse are you picking uh the frogs because at least they're cute that's true. Also, That's true. And you get to retain your intelligence. Like, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't call being a frog a, being a frog a, an upgrade, but I, I would call it a side grade. Like being able to jump real far is real cool. I, I bet. Yeah, I bet. I bet the frogs that are like out in the wild, just other fucking, and like just living their best life in a swamp in Louisiana, are are kind of just big chilling. Like I mean, like I mean, I I understand why they would attack somebody and like get depressed that they're being locked up i mean like i have armed guards escort me back to my quarters every day i don't like it either yeah same big same i don't know i mean i'm sure there are pros and cons um i'm not really a big fan of the idea of five months of excruciating pain during the transformation that doesn't sound great um but at least i would still be more or less me at the end of it so i mean 
frogs is better than cordyceps. It's very true. But yeah. And maybe I would be like, I would I would hope that if I was a frog, I would also be the pet of like a multi billionaire. And then turn him. And just like spoiled rotten. And then just turn him into a frog too. Oh. Billionaire frog. Billionaire frog. Do you think the monocle comes with it? I don't know, but I would like to name him Frogus Wang. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, ultimately, this is one of those things where it's all, like, as dense of an article and subject as it is, SCP-306 is pretty cut and dry. Like, it's one of those things where we kind of know how the Keter works, but it's just still a, a real problem to contain. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward assignment as far as Keter duty goes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't need to think about the motivations or... We don't need to think about really anything. I mean, it's just a... It's a regular mushroom that infects things. And, uh, you know, it's going to to continue existing unless we eradicate it or something. But at the that? end of the day, it's like... Yeah, I mean, we understand how it works. We understand why it works. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. What else, what else do you say? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't want to turn into a frog. Um, Me neither. I think that there is a little bit of, um, what's it called? There's a uh, there's a medical term for it. Um, is it called locked in syndrome? Oh yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Where, I uh, that is absolutely horrifying for those of you who uh, are at home who don't know what I'm talking about. This is a syndrome where you can't move or speak or anything like that and thus you're just stuck in basically your own body uh and observe the world around you um and uh i think that that's very similar i mean obviously you can still move as a frog but like you're not able to communicate and thank god that we've decided to determine that they're you know intelligent because um we just thought they were frogs for the longest time <laughs> Yeah, someone, like, give them, like, a Rubik's Cube or something. Yeah. And in that audio log, they just said that they know how to read and write, which I think is adorable. Can you imagine a frog writing? Yeah, except when you realize that it's writing, like, I demand better conditions of living. It's all fun, it's all fun and games for the frogs unionize. I mean, we have communist spiders. How long until we get communist frogs? Caleb, for a variety of reasons, you and I are going to put off talking about or experimenting with communist spiders for as long as possible <laughs> <laughs> because that means one of us is going to have to deal with communist spiders and i don't want to deal with that you don't want to deal with that uh i mean i i was assigned to to the communist spiders back in the day what was that uh i don't know if i'm allowed to say how long ago i was uh, assigned to that project well more power to you Next time they ask me for which category I'm volunteering, I'm putting your name down. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of, mm -hmm. Zach, what are we, uh, what are we talking about next episode? Oh, let me check my notes. Um, we need to clear off our desk at some point. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, 1680, yep, right? we're talking about Tyler. Okay, well, I guess we're both uh, we're both off of Keter duty for a hot second. Um, I guess uh, what you have the week off, so I guess I, I'm researching Tyler. Yeah, I guess I'll um, have fun with that one. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's that's fine. I'm okay with you, go duty. Um, does mean I don't get my week vacation, but yeah, it's whatever. Yeah. Um, well. Uh, Zach, in the meantime, where where can you be found at? You can find me over at makearitingcheck.blogspot.com, which is my personal blog of role for writing, where I showcase my short stories and occasional gaming articles. Uh, at the time of recording, I just finished up doing a guest writer month, and a big old thank you to all the people who submitted. They were lovely pieces. Um, and I also just launched a YouTube channel for role for writing recently, and you can find links on the blog. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you can find me at Calica, K A L I C K A, 1738 on Twitter and Instagram. Um, 
and yeah, there's nothing else I want to plug. Yep. Um, <laughs> you can find the podcast on Twitter at scpod underscore cast. You can find us on Instagram at scpod dot cast. We're available on Spotify and YouTube, and I say this at the end of every episode, but unfortunately, Amazon Podcast and Apple Music and all that other stuff. You have to have, like, a, a following and, like, all this other stuff before they'll even consider to put you on there. Um, and then they don't even pay you. So, um, I'm kind of giving up on that. But, yeah. um, please remember to like, to rate the podcast, to subscribe, to follow, all those things. Uh, I know every content creator always says it, but it really does help and uh, adds to our analytics and helps us get out to other people who really uh, would be interested in the stuff that we do. Um, yeah, and uh, in the meantime, um, stay froggy, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.